five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. As we have discussed in uh, some of the prior testimony, a state may impose a broad-based health care tax on providers and use the revenue raised from that tax to pay for the Medicaid program. Virginia looked at that uh, a couple of decades ago, and, and it was rejected because it was a, considered a sick tax or a bed tax. And why would we want to put more burden on those people who are already sick by having a broad-based uh, tax on folks who are in the hospital? But because of the, uh, the way the uh, FMAP works, the federal Medicaid assistance percentage, the effect of this is that a state can draw down more and more federal spending in its Medicaid program. Currently, these provider taxes are permissible, as we talked about earlier, uh, if they are applied at a rate that produces revenues less than or equal to 6% of the provider's net patient revenues. Now, I, I know, Ms. Schwartz, you said that's not cheating, but from a Virginia perspective, even though it's legal, it's seen as a little bit dicey that you get more money because you charge your, your sick people more taxes, therefore you can get more money drawn down from the federal government. Can you talk about any work that uh, either uh, MACPAC or GAO has done to explore provider taxes to see how they're utilized by the states and how they drive up the spending or how provider taxes can create what we believe in Virginia is a perverse incentive in Medicaid? Either of y'all want to tackle that one? We, we've written ab uh, about um, provider taxes and described um, the statute as you have, um, and, and we have expressed, there's been an expression of interest in, in learning more, um, but it's a topic that's difficult to study because you're having to look at the finances of the entire state and their, their tax structure, so it's not one that we have a lot to offer now, but I'm hopeful that in the future we'll have more information to be able to share on that. Well, as Mr. Bouchon said earlier, maybe we'd be better off if we just d decided what was the right amount for each state and sent it back to them, and then you don't have all these little games being played about we're going to charge our people a sick tax so that we can then draw down more money. Uh, I've introduced a bill, the Medicaid Tax Fairness Act, which is co-sponsored by some of my colleagues on the committee, Blackburn, Bouchon, and Guthrie. That doesn't get to the whole problem, but it does reduce the current provider tax threshold from 6% to 5.5%, uh, which is what it was just a few years ago. Uh, what do you all think of that uh, concept? And, and there's a follow-up question, too. Um, we have looked at provider states' uses of pro provider taxes at a broad level, at a national level, and have found that states are increasingly relying on pr provider taxes as a source of the non-federal share of Medicaid. And we looked in three states at arrangements where, indeed, um, there was an increase in the Medicaid payments and some sort of contribution, for example, through provider taxes from, from the same providers that were receiving payments. Um, and so we, we would agree that there uh, needs to be much more transparency on what is reported. And um, with regard to your proposal about reducing the provider tax, that I would just note that there have been um, several bodies, including CMS in it, um, its budget, that have um, also suggested um, reducing provider taxes as a way to um, improve the fiscal integrity of Medicaid. Yeah, and my bill uh, is actually the first step, I think, but it's H.R. 1400, and then we can go forward from there. And what's interesting is, is folks on the other side of the aisle will recognize oftentimes I'm in conflict with the administration, but in December 2010, President Obama's fiscal commission said Congress and the president should eliminate state gaming of Medicaid tax gimmick. They recommended restricting and el eventually eliminating this practice. While this policy would obviously need to be phased in incrementally, does GAO or MACPAC, and I think you've already answered it in part, but do, do either of you have a position on that policy? And if not, can you comment on benefits of reducing the use of the provider taxes over time? And, and you may have already answered it in your previous answer, and I recognize that, but did want to get it out there that, that it's, uh, this is a bipartisan uh, thought. It's not something that uh, we own just on the Republican side or just on the Democrat side, but gaming the system moves money around, but it doesn't really help the sick folks. Comments? Agree, disagree? Um, I would just say that from the, the commission's perspective that the interest um, at the moment has been on transparency and that's uh, you need those data to be able to then evaluate um, different policy options. The commission as of this time has, has no position on that. 
And I would just say at some point, and I haven't introduced a bill, and maybe I should, but at some point we need to look at uh, helping folks out. I, I had a little concept when I was in the state legislature in Virginia that would allow folks who needed medical care, maybe not as, as intense as a nursing home, but needed some, at least two things a day that were of assistance, and we passed a law that would uh, allow, North Carolina has a similar law that would allow a medical cottage to be placed, a temporary, uh, to be placed in a family member's uh, backyard, side yard, whatever, worked under the regular laws, but it, but it created a zoning exemption for that. It might be a way that we can save money for folks all the way around uh, because it's cheaper than a nursing home, but the person is still getting care and they're with their family. It's a good win. We ought to talk about that later. I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate the time and uh, yield back. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. That concludes the uh, questions.